Hello and welcome to episode 15 of the Knitting Man podcast. Uh, this week mainly we're going to be talking about my off-piece vest and this week I decided just on a whim really to put pockets in it. So this week I'm going to show you how I put these pockets, integrated pockets, into my off-piece vest. Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is episode 15 of the Knitting Man podcast and this week we're going to put uh, some pockets in my off-piece vest. Um, but before that, uh, we haven't been around for a couple of weeks. And, um, and also today, what I wanted to say, today is our third anniversary. So three months ago today, we started this podcast. So this is episode 15 and we've done some Knitting Man shorts as well. So we, we've done a lot of work. So we actually gave ourselves a week off and um, over Easter and we were looking after the grandchildren and I did do a lot of work, which I will talk about, talk about um, very soon. Um, but um, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all back, all of the people that have been here before. And I hope you all had a lovely um, Easter. Um, to, uh, and hello to everyone out there in uh, Knitting Land or Knitting World. One day I'll work out what it is, whether it is actually Knitting World or Knitting Land. It's one or the other, I think. Um, and uh, what I did do this week, one of the things I did this week is um, I went back to Facebook. Um, in 2015, when I started doing Instagram, I stopped doing Facebook and I, I, ha I have a little, um, I had a little Facebook page that I set up for the Knitting Man back then and, and it's just sort of sat there doing nothing really. Um, but uh, this week I'd recently started one up for myself, my Gary Ray Smith page on Facebook and um, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing on Facebook, I haven't got a clue. But uh, I went back onto Facebook and started sharing stuff. So the page that you want to go to, but I'll put this link in my link tree, uh, which, and the link to that will be down below in the description. Um, but the page with all of the most recent stuff for uh, my Facebook will be my Gary Ray Smith page on Facebook. And I think, I think you just like the page on Facebook. I'm not sure, don't know how it works. But um, what's happened is that we've got lots of new followers. Is followers what they're called? Subscribers on the YouTube channel. So um, hello to those people. And um, I just want to really just to say, uh, just to start off by saying what we're about for those people. So if you've heard it all before, just, what's that Joe? Say, oh, you have to say that louder. Happy place. Oh yes, <laughs> what she says is, if you've seen it all before, just go to your happy place for a little while. So I'll just introduce myself to the new people. Anyway, um, yeah, so what we do, um, I'm really interested in colour work and I've been knitting for years and years and years. We live in uh, Cornwall, uh, which is the bottom left-hand corner of England and it's very beautiful and I go out and about and sometimes we feel that film that when we go out and about um, I don't think we've got a travels with my yarn this week but we call it travels with my yarn um, but in terms of knitting what we do is I do off piece things so I make them up as I go along so I don't have any pattern and I knit things like that Oh, and then I'll do some darning. Now, people, if anyone saw the darning episode last week, I was darning socks. And a lot of people said to me, oh, you should have had a bigger hole there. Well, I don't really let a big hole happen, you know, because I kind of am a bit preemptive. But what I'm going to try and do 
is create a big hole quite naturally. I'm, you know, I'm going to let it happen naturally. I'm get, so I'm going to create a big hole and um, and then I'm going to refilm my darning. What happens? What I do when I get a big hole? But um, in the interim, I thought I'd show you this. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you might have seen you might have seen uh, this jumper. Uh, this is one that. I'm trying to miss the miss the flowers uh this is one that um uh, mrs smith bought uh to people that are new here mrs smith her name's joe but i call her mrs smith most of the time but sometimes she's called the knitting with knitting widow because she's a widow to knitting but um she her big thing she doesn't really knit but she has said for the purposes of this podcast that she will allow me to teach her to knit, which could be really good fun. And a lot of people have said they'd like to see that. So we will be doing that in the future. But, uh, and the other thing is I do, what I do is I waffle on. So I start talking and Joe's going like this at the moment, cause she knows I'm waffling on and I've gone off the subject that I was talking about. And I can go off the subject and go off another subject and go off onto another subject. So I think I started off talking about darning but i don't know why i was talking about i was introducing the new people i was talking about darning what i do and then i started talking about me waffling on and right so back on the darning so this is the darning that um joe um one of joe's things that she does and um she joe likes to compare me as well if you're new she likes to compare me to ronnie corbett and um, it's not because of the glasses. Um, she likes to compare me to Ronnie Corbett because I just keep going off subject and then, and the, but I do in the end, I do come round to where I started. So anyway, uh, off piece, no, not off piece. Uh, Joe, stop laughing. Joe, Joe buys, Joe likes to buy little vintage jumpers and she loves like vintage hand knits. And she collects them all up for the grandchildren and this one had lots of moth holes so i darned it for um vera granddaughter vera and that's the other thing we've got quite a large family we've got four daughters and a plethora of grandchildren if that's the right word and usually they end up well, we, we can't avoid it really because we've always got a grandchild around when we're filming. So if you hear anybody in the background today, it's Arthur. Anyway, he's around. So I've gone off subject again. Jo buys little vintage things and um, that's her big thing. And obviously I do some knitting for the children, but not very much. So that's darning. Um, yes, darning episode did really well last week. Lots of people were, you know, loving it. So... Uh, yeah, and I will, I will do another darning episode in the future, and hopefully Joe will find a nice little uh, a nice little jumper like that. So uh, I do off piece knitting, darning, and also I do knit large picture knits. So this is my uh, swallows jumper, swallows vest. So I do like to graph up. I'm trying to get around the flowers there. I do like to chart up big pictures and do picture knits. And that's one of my great loves of my life. And uh, obviously not as big a love of my life as my lovely, beautiful wife. But um, yeah, it is, it's, it's such a joy. Picture knits are my thing, really. So um, if that's the sort of thing you like, that's, this is for the new people. Obviously the old people, you're coming back anyway. So yeah, but the new people, that's what we do. So um, that'll do for now because the five minutes is up. Sorry, we had to stop there because we are using an old iPhone 5 to do these videos on because that's what we started with. And I promised Joe a camera and it's not happened. And uh, but we like the iPhone 5. Anyway, uh, what we, we have to stop because when it gets to five minutes, what happens is if we let it run, then we end up losing that five minutes worth of, of video and then we have to start all over again. So we have to keep stopping it anyway. Um, yes, Joe said what I really didn't do is take you through what I do. So I do like it, it's visible mending that I do. I haven't got a sock, have we, Joe? 
So yes, I do visible mending. She just wants to point out uh, that it's visible mending that I'm into. And I've been doing visible mending since the 1980s. So uh, a long time now. And I am going to dig a pair of jeans out from the 1980s that I still have that were visibly mended back then. She's, she's just nipped out. If she comes back in, I'll kind, kind of try and act like butter will melt in my mouth. But um, this week, my purchases, I did buy some vinyl, mainly classical. I bought this sort of, um, I did buy this George Clinton, which is nice. And um, when I buy classical, I buy, oh, you know, this, this, these are rare classical albums, you know. So um, uh, that is, uh, that's on the original light blue label, I think. It's a sax, a Columbia sax, which is on the uh, blue silver label, which if you're into um, classical vinyl, you'll know what I mean. And, and oh, that's a nice... Um, Deutsche Gramophone Red Stereo, which is nice, and then more classical vinyl. So that was it um, for the vinyl. And the other thing is, um, I'm going to do Mug of the Week. Uh, I usually do Mug of the Week and I'm drinking out of the mugs, but I haven't drunk out of these. These haven't been washed actually yet since I brought them back in. Uh, Silver Jubilee Wear. These are... Um, like coronation mugs and things that I buy and I'll put all my pencils in those in the studio and these the, these used to actually go for you know a few quid you know like a tenner or something like that and these days nobody wants them and you can pick them up for a pound and and if you get enough of them and put them together with your pencils in they look lovely so they're going in my studio and my yarn purchases this week they, that is my yarn purchases this week and you'll, you'll note that what all I've done knitting wise this week or since you last when I say this week I mean since our last episode so all I've I've only knitted a few rows of this and a bit of pocket on the back but yet I've bought all of that yarn so and this happens week on week on week because I buy lots of vintage yarn and I did put a picture of my yarn stash last time it was all together. It was about, well, Arthur was a baby, seven now. So it was six or seven years ago since it was all together, but it was still all in boxes and bags and things. But I put a picture of that from that time on my Instagram this week. So if anyone wants to see what my yarn stash looked like six or seven years ago, and don't forget, I've been buying week on week since then. Um, but in the future, we are going to do the get my get Gary's yarn stash back together episode. Anyway, I better show you a few of these. What I really like is the old labels, and I feel really guilty sometimes because I think, oh, I want to use that colour. And then I take the label off and I think, oh, it's been with it for so long. You know, you should really, you know, leave them, not touch them. But, you know, I do use them. Um, and I do use an awful lot of vintage on. I like, that's what I like using. Uh, and I mix it in with new. So, um, yes, yeah, so there we've got patterns, DK, very nice pink. I'm going to run through these quickly. John Deacon. Deacon Fleck, DK, four ply. Oh, four ply and DK. There you go. And that is 90% wool. So I do use, and now I've got four of these, which are cotton. And I, don't, I really, I've only bought them because I like the label. I don't really use cotton very much, but I really like the label. So there's four of those there. And then there's one of these, Lister's Lavender, three ply, 100% wool. And this little skein, that's quite fine that. It's almost like lace weight, um, but I'll probably mix that in with something. Um, and then, oh, there's another Lister's Lavender. And that's uh, in a cream, different color. And then these two odd balls, which are nice, they're, very woolly 
quite rough, like a Shetland yarn. And then one of these has got a label, really nice label on that one. Mariner three ply, 100% wool, one ounce. And then I've got another one of those with no label. So they were my purchases for this week. And uh, yeah, that's it. She's not come back in. Oh, sewing machine. Hang on a sec, I'll go and get it. And I'm back. Um, yeah, I bought this, which is a lovely, it's a little Singer sewing machine. And it's a proper working sewing machine. It's not a toy one, as far as I can work out. It's solid metal base. It's a heavy little thing. It's got plastic top on it. It's working. A bit dusty. I'll clean that up and oil it. And uh, yeah, beautiful little thing. So that was only three quid. I was pleased with that. So uh, yeah, they were my purchases for the week. Hello, she's back. She's making me a cup of tea. So if you hear some banging around, it's not after. It's it's uh, Mrs. Smith banging around in the background making me a cup of tea. Can't complain about that, can I? Um, so uh, the uh, the other thing that um, I need to talk to the people that are new to the channel about, I want to everyone else as well, is catch up on my projects. Well, I really should be casting on the hair, um, and um, but I know people already have. Um, but I have done a hair and I have done that hair and I really do want to knit the hair but I've got it in my mind that I'm moving on to the next thing and um, so the, I, I'm actually working on two projects at the moment I'm working on my off-piste vest which I'm making up as I go along and you're going to see me put the pockets in that later on in the show and my new project which is mrs smith's shawl now i've done lots of baby blankets before but i've never knitted a shawl because i wouldn't wear a shawl i'd wear a scarf and i suppose there's not a lot of difference really because you can have a you know an oblong shawl really and scarf it i mean but you know maybe it's i don't know anyway i wear scarves but i wouldn't wear a shawl um, so I've never knitted a shawl before and somebody suggested that I should do one for Mrs Smith. So she's been digging around and she's found some colours because I got these. Um, so she's put all of her colours. I'm just going to swap these flowers with this bag. So this is the bag that I got a couple of weeks ago. And she started putting the colours that she wants, which are like these cerise pinks and mauves and into sort of brownie reds and then with black background and then there's some little accent colors like green and she's put the those into a bag so i've got a bag full of yarn there which is going to be joe shawl now um we were i i've got loads of um uh reference points for this shawl and i want it to be flowers and so we're talking about flowers on the back black background um, but I've been thinking for a long while and I don't know if anybody else has got this book um, it's quite rare it's quite difficult to find now um, Reverend Rutt Bishop of Leicester Richard Rutt history of hand knitting um, and um, my friend Tash got me this copy um, uh, she's at bookmark uh, Falmouth that's her um, business bookmark Falmouth um, and if you want to go on her website um, all of the illustrations for the headings were done by me so you can go and have a look at that I, I suppose it's like book, bookmark falmouth.co.uk or something but there is particularly in this book there is a picture and since I've seen this picture it's fascinated me and I've googled this guy and I've tried to find out more about this person so if anybody else has got more information or more pictures or can, can point me in the direction of more pictures of his work, um, I'd be really grateful. And his name is Hashimoto Osamu. And that is the picture that I find absolutely fascinating. I don't know if you can, if that's going to come up very well on the, uh, on the show, but, um, yeah 
just an amazing, just crazy bit of knitting. And um, so that that's really my jumping off point, my starting point for this um, shawl that I'm going to knit for Mrs. Smith. So I've started doing drawings. So I don't know if you can see that. So it's going to be a triangular shawl. And then the idea is it's going to have sort of bands of dark color with lighter bands of say blossom almost like a branch of blossom and a branch of blossom going through and then within the dark patches there'll be other bits of blossom so that's the plan it's very rough at the moment um, and it's just something that's sort of starting to build in my brain but so that's my next project and that will be a graft project and I will be putting that out as a chart for people to use and people to but it will be um, cherry blossom probably cherry blossom um, and I did do a cherry bo blossom um, I don't know where it's gone I did uh, it, pe people will know I did a, a, a very small cherry blossom dark blue with white swatch uh, a few years ago it will be similar to that but different because I will have, I will improve on that so uh, they're my two projects uh, so um, now I thought I would uh, tell you what I have been up to last week when Joe was looking after children because I was working um, and I was I was doing things that people have asked me to do so oh first of all the bluebird chart um which was originally um only a we ran out of these um in etsy and so i ordered some more so they're back in again in etsy but they started off just as a paper chart like this a poster chart and uh, then we put them on ravelry and people have asked if we would put them in something other than Ravelry, because I know some people have problems with Ravelry. So we put them in Lovecrafts this week. So if you want one of those as a digital download, it's now available in Lovecraft. So that was one thing that I did. That took me a fair amount of time. Then uh, people have been asking for Death's Head Moths chart. The Death's Head Moths chart, which is that chart there, uh, to be put on Ravelry. Because until this week, it was only available as a poster in the Etsy shop. So that is now in Ravelry as a PDF. And then uh, the other thing was that people were asking for the cat chart. And so now the cat chart, that's another one that I did. So now the cat chart is available in Ravelry as a PDF, as well as in the Etsy shop as well, as a poster. And then that leads, so the only thing is the hair chart. And the hair chart, um, it's only available in the Etsy shop at the moment. So that's what I've been doing this week, apart from uh, sort of joining uh, Facebook groups. And some of you have said hi when I posted uh, my first posts within pace, uh, Facebook groups. And uh, thank you for that. Um, and uh, generally I found uh, Facebook very welcoming for somebody who hasn't really gone on there for seven years. Um, it's been quite sort of interesting going back and seeing how big these groups are. So um, yeah, it's been it's been an eye opener really. So I, I've joined a few groups and yeah, everyone's been really lovely. And of course, the other thing that I've done this week or since we last filmed was to do some knitting because I have struggled over the last three months since we started our YouTube channel to do as much knitting as I was doing before, uh, which is crazy really. 
Um, but uh, this week I kind of uh, made a concerted e effort because I knew that we weren't going to be filming as much. Um, so, um, and I had this sort of idea, this uh, crazy idea to, to have some little yarn pockets in my off-piece vest just at the front here. So I could have a little ball in that side, a little ball in that side while I'm knitting. Um, so um, what I did was I created some little squares to go inside and um, then I I knitted the rib and cast off the rib and then when I came back round I attached those so I'm going to go to those clips now so these are clips of me putting these pockets into my off piece vest okay so i decided what i wanted to do is add some little yarn pockets to my off piece vest so what i did was i've got 34 stitches of rib there uh, and i've got one on each side so there's the other one there and i've knitted the rib for a few rows and then i've cast off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a back of a pocket. So these are 34 stitches here. So this is the back of the pocket, which I'm now going to join in. So um, I said I was doing this on Instagram and Erica asked if I would uh, film it so that you could all see what I'm doing. So um, that's what I've decided to do. Add these little pockets to put a couple of balls of yarn in so um, I'm just going to the, the other thing is as well I'm changing um, colors as well stupidly on this row so um, I'm counting the um, the black and the pale blue um, so I think I've got six on there at the moment two four six so I will worry about those ends so that gives brings me to eight Okay, seven and where is it? There, eight. Okay, so that's eight, and I'm going to count to 15. So, um, on here, I've got my two little pocket backs. So, I'm just going to go straight over onto that. So, eight. I'll worry about the end later. Nine. Pull that along. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. 14, 15, and now I'm going to do three of the light blue, one, two, three, and now I'm going to do 15 of the black, is that your tummy Joe? Cut that bit out. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Oh, wrong colour. <laughs> That's it. It's because we're right on top of each other here. I've got a phone right in my face. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's quite probably quite boring this because I'm not really getting. <laughs> <laughs> 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, and then three of the blue, one, two, three. Okay, so we're getting there. And then we'll do 15 of the black. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm back on the other needle. Six, there was a stitch marker there, which I don't need. What was on six, Joe? Six, well, I've got a bit of brown there. Why is that? Don't matter. All right, six. Just carry on. Seven. So that, just to show you where I am at the moment, it's all very tight on the needles. I should have done two sets of needles for this. So that is now integrated. That The back of the pocket is now integrated with my knitting. And what I will do is, later on I'll show you, I will stitch that to there to make it a pocket. I've just got up to the next to the uh, next pocket and I'm just going to add this in so um, so Joe's going to film it again and then we'll come back later when I sew the pockets in so I'll have 15 of the black one two and then I'm onto the pocket Just to, where I didn't want the actual, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, 15, 3 on the blue, 1, I'll tidy all up later, 2, 
three on the glue. Right, now I'm joining in the other side. Take that stitch marker out. And, but I'm changing color, which is what I didn't want to be changing color right on the join, but there you go, I am, so. Don't need to film anymore. I'll stop there, just show you this where I am. So there's the pocket on the back there, just hanging off loose, Joe. Yeah. And that's it from the front. And um, what I'll do now is um, I'll go round and uh, I've got uh, I've got a day with the kids now. So I'll do a couple of rows of that. And then later on, I'll get Joe to film me, me just sewing the pocket back. So that's it for now, Joe, thanks. Um, so that was me um, attaching the pocket backs uh, to the uh, front of the knitting and um, uh, later on I'm going to uh, show you a clip of me um, sewing the pocket backs down um, but for now We've got a little travels with my yarn. In actual fact, I don't even think I'm in it. I think I've been cut out of this one. Um, but this is this is our nearest beach to where we live, um, and it's called Gwydion, and it overlooks uh, St Ives. So you'll be able to see St Ives in the distance. Um, and this is probably the shortest travels with my yarn we've ever done. It's just a tiny little glimpse of our local beach. So that was um, our local beach, Gwythian Beach there. Phone's ringing, Joe. And um, now we're going to the clip of me sewing the pockets uh, onto the back of my jumper. Okay, at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, since, you, since I filmed that last clip um, that you saw um, where I was attaching that pocket on the back i've done a few rows and um so that's where we are at the moment and so i'm now um going to just sew these pockets and i'm just going to attach it and there's lots of different ways i could have done this i could have knitted this twice as long and then doubled it back on itself and sewn it onto there but that would have made it more puffy um, my belly always, already looks big enough. So what I was thinking that I wanted to keep it as flat as possible. So I'm just going to sew the pocket to there. The other thing I could have, uh, that I could do, or I, I've done quite a lot in the past is that I leave these stitches across here. I don't cast them off. 
I leave them on um, a stitch holder and then I knit the rib after I've joined it I then knit the rib and then just sew either side of that rib so um, there's more of an overlap if you like okay so it, it's a little bit difficult because what I've done is I, I'm actually on two sets of, of needles so uh, the, the front is on that set and the back is on that set of needles but I've just tied this green I should have done it in something that stands out a bit more again so you could have seen it but very similar to, to when I do the steaking um, I'm just going to do the same I'm just going to pick up from the back here just trying to get it as straight so I'm looking at getting it as straight as possible but yeah I'm just going to pick from under here and the main thing is that of course it doesn't show on the front but I'm thinking actually I was thinking about doing some um, uh, visible something I've been thinking quite a lot about recently I don't know why um maybe it's just because i've been looking at you know what other people have been doing um but i've been thinking about and i quite liked it when i did that sort of visible sewing on the on the um what blanket was it joe that i did recently oh the death's head moth because i did it in a contrasting color so i sh could show you guys what i was doing um I um I quite like the look of it and I was thinking about trying to incorporate it into um into what I'm I'm doing and also I suppose Eric Knight um I've been looking at you know Eric Knight stuff recently and she's she's done some lovely photographs of um where where you can see the, you know the the ends of things are, are left you know they're not darned in they're just left on the on the garment which is like um, a bit like deconstruction or something you know which is um, interesting I like that so I have been thinking about doing visible joining visible seams get it, get it and rest. I'm just rush I'm rushing because I'm trying to get through this quickly as you can see it's not exactly straight but I'll just keep going pull it down the tad there just to be sure and then I'll just run along where must it I don't know if this is boring is this boring do you suppose Joe so that's all I'm doing really I'm just tacking it on and now I'm going to come back the other way once I've finished and that's it really I'll show you I'll get to the end and then I'll I'll show you how it looks Okay, so I've just gone, I've just tacked it on really around the outside. You know, it's not perfect. I haven't tried to make it perfect at all. Just do it. And now I'm going to come back. Don't actually need necessarily to come back. It's, um, it's actually all right as it is, but I'll give it a bit of extra. Just in case I get a, uh, try and stuff Balls of, it's my yarn pocket I don't know if I mentioned that it's going to be little yarn pockets so. so that's it really I'm just going to go all the way back around there tie it off and then that's the front Can you see it Oh, what, in my pocket? Yeah, yeah okay. So there's the, there's all these needles in the way, don't help. Yeah, so there's the pocket there. Go back a bit. That's how it's going to look. That's Joe's hand. There you go. So um, that was 
um, my pockets in my off-piste vest. So next week, hopefully, because hopefully I'll get a chance to do a bit more knitting, I'll get up to the armholes and then we can start looking at the armholes. So that would be good. Um, there, there, I was going to do a Q&A this week and I was also going to big up all of the people that um, uh, that are knitting uh, my projects and I've started to write a list but I didn't finish it so I thought I'd really like to make sure I've got everybody on that so I'll probably do that next week now um, uh, but one of the uh, uh, one of the things in the Q&A because I was doing knitting last week whilst I was uh, talking and I did struggle a little bit to talk and knit at the same time but Gia said that she's new to the channel and she loves it but could I do a sit and knit where I sit and talk? And I quite like that idea. And um, I don't know if anybody else does. I mean, it might just be little short episodes or something where I just sit and talk about an epi a, a, a subject or, or even do a QA and a while Joe um, does the questions and I do the answers. So if you like that idea, let us know in the comments below and, um, and we, we might do that in future. Um, so, um, if you don't already, um, can you subscribe to this channel because that's going to uh, encourage us to make more videos and I am Gary Ray Smith on Instagram and I am Gary Ray Smith on Facebook if you'd like to follow me on any of those and um, the other thing is that we have been thinking about um how we can grow our channel um uh, obviously our problem at the moment uh, if you can call it a problem it's not really a problem but uh it's time um because i'm working and and that's the thing that is obviously joe looks after children uh, every day um but uh the 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 idea potentially we were thinking about um, maybe having starting a YouTube membership scheme but we thought we thought about it quite a lot and we thought that the um, the knitting community already has established um, uh, uh, links with Patreon so we're thinking about um, setting up a little Patreon uh, uh, I don't know what it's called it's called membership or scheme Joe Joe doesn't know I don't know so um, but that's something that I might look at this week um, so if anybody has any comments about that let me know in, in the comments below um, so um, that's it for this week and uh, so it's good night from me and it's good night from her see you next time <laughs>